AutoCAD tables work very similarly to a spreadsheet. So if you've used something like Microsoft Excel, you'll be very familiar with how to use tables. So they'll actually probably be a piece of cake for you because they work very similarly. Now they're not as powerful, obviously, but they are still full of many features. Plus you can work with your data inside of AutoCAD in a table format. Now let's open up the tables.dwg file. In this file, I have a table already set up. It has a little bit of formatting done to it. And I want to show you some tricks that you can use. Plus we have three different shapes that we're going to use tables with to determine their total area. So in this table, you can see it's already formatted just slightly. It has some red coloring on some of the text. Some of the other text is white, but this is just a table from a surveyor's notebook. And it has point numbers, descriptions, northing and eastings, rod height, information, elevations, things like that. So if you've ever done any type of surveying work, this might look familiar to you. So when you select a table and then you go to edit row or a column or a cell, whatever it is, it will open up a table cell contextual ribbon tab for you. And here you'll have access to most of your formatting. You'll also be able to edit the formatting for your cell column or row here in the properties palette. So when you select any of those three options, you can lock your cells. You can lock them for content, meaning these numbers can't be changed until you unlock them. Or you can format lock them, meaning once you set up your visual display, then you can lock that in so it won't be accidentally changed. Or you can lock both of them or none at all. To change some of your settings, you can just pick a row or a column. So in this case, I'm going to pick a column. You can get to your alignments here so you can switch everything top left, middle right, or however you want them. You can do the same thing for a column or for an individual cell. You can also change some of the formatting. So if you select the entire thing here, you can change some of the formatting just through your properties tab. You can change some of your cell width and height. You can change the overall color of something. You can change spacing, break height, things like that. Now, if you select this little corner here, this little gray box, that'll give you even more formatting options. So you can set up cell width and height again here. You can also set up a background color. Right now I have it set to none, but you can pick most any color that is available to AutoCAD. You can do the same thing with your borders. When you select the borders, this will give you control of them similarly to how you do it in Excel. So you set up your parameters. So we want a double line. We want the color to be green. And then you just start picking. And this will give you a preview of what it's going to look like. There, I just changed all of that. And you don't have to make everything the same. You can pick just a column and change your borders. You can put it in a single row, make it green, or we can even make it a cyan color. And you can do that too. You can also change just the text. You can also select just specific cells. So if you pick one cell and then hold down the shift key, left click again, it'll get everything in between. If you press down the control key, it doesn't add them up. So keep that in mind. So if I go and change the text, I can scroll down here, change it from red to yellow. Now, sometimes you'll find that something just doesn't quite change. For example, if I click here in this box and it says it's red, but it's clearly white. If I try to change it to yellow, it still doesn't change. Well, that must mean that there's some sort of formatting inside the cell itself. So when you double click in the cell, you can edit the text in it. You might need to select it and you can see there's an override that's been added to it right here. So you can go to by layer or you can right click and go to the remove formatting option. And once you've done that, exit the table and you can see it's gone to the setting where I've put it. So you may run across that from time to time. Now, if you create a table, it's very simple. Just type in the word table. You can give it all this different type of information that you want. You can set the number of columns and rows and width to it right there. Click OK. And there we go. And you can start entering it. Now, if you want to add a row, just select the row, right click and say insert row above or below. And in this case, it really won't matter. And I'm going to insert one more. So let's find some areas. I'm going to call this one area. And I'm going to get inside this text, right click and say insert field. I'm going to go to object. 
pick object again, and click on the little target. I'm going to select this shape here. And I want the area. Here's my preview. That's just in units. Click OK. So this tab right here now has the area for this shape. I'm going to do the same thing for these others. Just go through the same settings again until we get all of the shapes in here. Now that I have some data inside my table, I can use formulas. So if I click on a cell here and I go up to my formula options right here, you can see what I can add here, sum, average, count, cell, or equation. Or if I left click inside the cell, right click, go to insert, I can insert a block inside a table. So you can create a legend with symbols, a field, which I've done over here, or a formula. And I have the same options right here. So if I pick sum, it asks me to select the first corner of the table cell range. So I'm going to pick inside here and then for the second. So I'm just creating a selection rectangle and it will sum up all of these together. And there's my sum. If I look at the math, it looks about right. So you can do that. That's how you do your formulas, just the same way you would in regular spreadsheet, but you are limited a bit to what you can do. So again, you single click, then right click, go to insert, formulas, average in this case, and I'm going to make my selection window, press enter, and there's my average. So you can format this bit of information just like you would anything else, just like regular text and things like that. Now, if you have a spreadsheet that someone else has created for you, or perhaps you've created it, that's fine. You can insert that spreadsheet in a couple of different ways. Now, if you open it up in Excel, which I've done here, and this is that same data that we saw earlier, one of the easiest ways to get it into AutoCAD is to select all of the cells that you want, right click and copy. Collapse that, go back into AutoCAD, go to your Home tab, go to your Clipboard panel, Go to paste and then click paste special. Now you can just paste the data the way it is right now. If I do, this is what I get. I get all the information in this image looking thing. I can't really do anything with it. I can make it a little bit bigger, make it a little bit smaller, and that's about it. But that's fine. And that's a one time deal. It's already formatted. It's just a couple of clicks and it's there. Another option, again, go to paste special. I can select here under the paste as an AutoCAD entity. Click OK, insert it, and it inserts it as an AutoCAD table. Then you can go and format it however you want. But the nice thing about it is that it's an AutoCAD table, and I can come in here and I can edit this however I'd like. I can delete a column if I want to. I can delete a row if I'd like. And I can control the way it looks in here. Now there's one more option I want to show you. Again, you go to your clipboard, go to paste special and paste link. Now, again, I have my two options to paste it. So it looks like this Microsoft Excel worksheet or as an AutoCAD entity. I'm going to select AutoCAD entity, click OK and click here and it inserts it. Now, when I select this, it is now linked to my spreadsheet. When I change the spreadsheet and save the spreadsheet, this file will be updated inside AutoCAD. So if you have a data table that you need for a report, you can type it up in Excel, put that in your report, and link it to your AutoCAD drawing so that the two will always be in sync.